Praise the Lord. We are so excited. What a day. It has been an amazing, amazing day. So I'm excited to um, get into lesson number two. Thank you all for joining me. This is Stella Payton. And tonight we are in session two of our eight week Bible study, She Lives by the River. Now, let's just take a few minutes to give everybody time to come on. If you wanna go ahead and share the link, tell go ahead and send out a message, let everybody know this is the time, go ahead and log on. I'm excited about what God has given me to share because what I'm gonna be talking about tonight in lesson two is what it took to really see major breakthrough in my own life as the Lord really began to open doors for me, as the Lord really began. Hi, Marie. There's Marie. Thank you so much for logging on. Uh, thank you, Rachel. Thank you so much for logging on. Um, there's, uh, thank you, everybody that's starting to kick, click in. And, uh, but what God really started to do was activate breakthrough for me. Now, in order for us to activate breakthrough, there are some things that are going to happen in your life. There are some things that are going to move you forward. There are some things that are going to propel you into the next thing that God has for you. Now, here's the thing. That doesn't happen automatically. And so a lot of times there are people who are waiting for breakthrough. They're waiting for things to transpire. They're waiting for doors to open. They're waiting, they're waiting for that opportunity to knock. They're wait and so what we've done is we don't realize that we have authority. We have the capacity to activate that breakthrough. We have the capacity to cause things to transpire. So tonight, what we're going to be talking about in lesson two is the process for making that happen. Uh, oh, there is a blessing and precious. You know, that's really funny that two of my friends, blessing and precious, log on at the same time. I think that's awesome. So glad you guys are joining us. And um, so as we uh, just give a few more people time to get on. So what we're going to talk about tonight is the power we possess in activating breakthrough. This is lesson two, She Lives by the River, lesson two, of eight total lessons. Now, before we jump in too much, um, let's see, check my time. Well, we got a little more time. We can give a couple, give time for a little few more people to come on. Uh, what, let's review what we started talking about last week. Last week, we talked about the whole understanding of the Proverbs 31 woman. We said that this woman was rare, R-A-R-E. What made the woman of Proverbs 31 rare was the fact that she not only had encounters with God. So there's the E. The in E is for encounters. So R-A-R-E, the E was for encounters. But in the encounter, the time that you use to connect with God, that encounter should activate revelation. In other words, it should create an energy and a synergy with the heart of God that something inside of you clicks on. Okay, so as that thing inside of us clicks on, as we step into it, as we come alive to what God is giving us, then we get that, that revelation is more than just information. It's more than just an experience. It's more than just an encounter. What happens with that revelation is a kind of conception where God will give you, he will move. Now we hear in the book of Genesis where it talks about the Holy Spirit moving and brooding upon the water. Well, when you have an encounter with God, it moves you to do something, okay? And so with that movement, God moves upon us. He moves upon us to take an action. So that takes us from E, encounter, to our revelation, to the next one, which was taking action. You get an instruction to do something. Most people in the kingdom of God are sitting around waiting for God to tell you, get up, go call John Davis, thus saith the Lord. It doesn't happen that way. The Holy Spirit will move upon you and compel you to take an action. And here's the thing. Most of the time, the action he tells you to take will be small because it takes 
a, it takes an acorn to grow an oak. And what many people don't realize, Korodesh, I hear the Holy Spirit kicking in already. When the, what many of us don't realize is that the Lord will always give us things in the form of a seed and conception stage because it takes time for most of us to grow into our purpose. If God just let you jump in your purpose, jump into your calling, jump into that next thing he has for you all at once, you would not be able to contain it because most most of us don't have the root system necessary to sustain the vision that God gives us. So he gives us the vision in seed form. And that seed form will be a small action to take. It'll be a small action and a small instruction. But when you take that action, it becomes the acorn going into the ground to plant the oak tree. And so what you'll find is that five years from now, seven years from now, ten years from now, an action that you take today will be the seed that will open the door for the million dollar breakthrough that your ministry is going to need in ten years in order for you to do what God has called you to do. And so it will start with a seed. It will start with a small thing. So we said encounter. This is last week. We're reviewing last week. For those of you who are coming on, this is a review. So don't come on and pop off. This is a review. So this is what we're going to talk about. Where we're going to go from last week to this. So E is for encounter. R is for revelation. A is for taking action. And then once you take action, it's going to produce results. It's going to produce results. Now, so that's last week. The woman of Proverbs 31 was rare, R-A-R-E, because she encountered God, which created revelation, which activated an action where the Holy Spirit moved on her to take an action. And then once you take the action, it generates results. Now, if you want that whole lesson, go on to Facebook page, my Facebook page, and look for the lesson from last week, okay? When you log on and get that lesson from last week, then you'll see, the you can catch the whole thing. Now, let's look at... Lesson number two. Hallelujah. And before we dive in, let's just pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Jesus, right now for your word. We decree that your word is alive. It is powerful. It is operating. It is producing its desired outcome. We decree that as the rain and the snow comes down from heaven, so does your word come down from heaven so that it can produce snow packs of insight and revelation to bring water for the thirsty season. So if you are entering a season where you have been where you have been finding lack and insufficiency and you're thirsty the Lord is saying there is a snowpack of revelation that's been sitting on a mountain waiting for you to activate your prayer activate your faith for you to draw on that now today we're talking about lesson number two Thank you, Lord. Lesson number two. Today we're talking about drinking from the river. Now, our lesson starts in Judges chapter 7, where we see the story of Gideon, where Gideon and was, had, had, uh, had thousands and thousands of men. He was about to go into battle. In other words, Gideon had had an encounter with God. He had an encounter in the, in the wine press, and he, was, and he had his encounter where God spoke to him and gave him an instruction. And so God says to Gideon, Gideon, look, you got too many men. I'm going to thin them out for you. So God says to Gideon, I want you to go down to the river and I want you to have the men drink. And I want you to observe how they drink. I want you to pay attention to the tributaries that they drink from and how they absorb what I am sending them, which will be substance for them in the season that they're entering. So Gideon takes his men to the river and they all bow down to start to drink. Now what happened is that Gideon had thousands of men. But when they began to drink, God started to thin them out. So what I want you to understand tonight, the first thing that's going to happen is when you get ready to go into the thick of what God has called you to, the crowd around you will thin. Now, there are several types of people that God is going to be eradicating from you. So stop tripping when your friends start, the so-called friends and so-called people that you love, people that care about you, people, your buddies, when they start dissipating because they have to go. Now, the word of God says that the two characteristics of the people who left Gideon were the fearful and those who were filled with fear. 
Now, in order for you to get into the next thing, there are two things that you cannot be weighed down with. You cannot be weighed down with the spirit of fear. It doesn't matter where fear comes from. doesn't matter the source. It doesn't matter who the people are around you who are inundated with the spirit of fear. They have to go because you can't take them into the next thing until they're gone. Fear is in opposition to who God is and how God functions. So if fear is a part of your paradigm, it must go. Now, one of the reasons people participate in sin is because they are fearful. Do you know that when God tells you don't steal, it's not that he doesn't want you to take somebody else's good, but what it takes for you to steal is unbelief, is a fearful heart that says, I don't believe God can provide for me, so I'm going to take it for myself. That's a spirit of fear where you are doubting the power and the capacity of God to produce what you need. That's where fear comes from. The reason a man cheats on his wife is I don't believe this woman has the capacity. This woman God gave me has the capacity to produce everything I need. So I'm going to go find me somebody else out of your fear. It's not about cheating. It's not even about your self-esteem. It's about a spirit of fear that lodges in your heart that tells you what you have been given by the hand of God is insufficient. And that, my friend, is nothing about, uh, it's not about infidelity. It's not about cheating. It's not about your low low self-esteem. It is. It's about the fact that you do not have faith enough in God to trust that God can take what you gave you. He gave you in seed form and produce in seed form the oak tree of a marriage that you are, in, you are too impatient. Just saying. That was free. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to go there. I'm just following the path that the Holy Spirit leads, sends me out on. So now we understand that in order for us to get to the thing that God has, in order for us to possess the thing that God wants, you must eradicate the fear that comes from you from all sides. Now, we're, let's talk about the concept of tributaries. You guys, pr forgive me. I'm so hyped up. I've got a dust to my face. Pardon me. There we go. I'm dusted. Okay, now we're talking about the concept of tributaries because drinking implies two things. It talks about what are we taking in. When it comes to us entering into what God has for us, what God is saying is that those tributaries that are pouring into you have a certain level of authority to bring you to a certain place. Now, here's something if you have known Stella for more than 15 minutes, you have probably heard me say, and this is pretty important, so if you are taking notes, jot this down. Whenever God gets ready to take you into a new season, when he gets ready to bring you into a new opportunity, when he gets ready to bring you into a new level of authority, when he gets ready to introduce you to the next thing, he will typically do three things. The first thing God will do is he will introduce into your life new information. In other words, the tributaries that are feeding into you will change. He will cut off some people and he will bring in new information, new data. Now, this data will typically have three characteristics. So as you're listening to you, listening to this, I want you to survey your heart and ask, Lord, what key new information have you been inundating my spirit with? And you will know it right away because it'll be something that will gel with your inner man. It'll be something that'll bring a sense of peace and continuity. It'll bring a sense of new awareness. Now, you probably won't fully understand it, and that's okay because because your understanding will come. That's why the word of God says in all you're getting, you have to get understanding. It's not something that's just going to pop up in front of you. You're going to have to go in pursuit of it. You're going to have to go and get it. Okay. You'll get insight. You'll get a snapshot. But for you to get the full understanding, you must pursue. Now, now you know, I asked the Holy Spirit. Let, let me, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. If you notice, I'm wearing a feather. This is a feather. I call this my angelic feather. Now, I'm going to tell you this feather is significant, and I'm wearing it tonight for a particular reason. The Lord had been showing me insights and different things about 9-11. 9-11 and 11-11. Well, if you know, 9 plus 1 plus 1 is 11. And so I had been hearing, so I kept seeing it and seeing it and seeing it and seeing it. In other words, the Lord was giving me a snapshot of something where he wanted me to go get understanding.
He's saying, I'm giving you a picture of something that is paramount for you to get a grip on. Because what you don't understand, you cannot fully participate with. And so the Lord began to show me, he began to speak to me, and I kept seeing 9-11, 9-11, 9-11. Well, for, you know, I'm going through some significant life experience events right now. I'll tell you all about that later on. But for now, just know it's significant for me. And the Lord had begun to, keep, I kept seeing this 9-11 and I was trying to figure out what is this, what is the significance of this? And the Lord began to show me, he kept giving me clues and I would see 9-11 on my phone, 9-11 on, 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 my, on, my, on my car dial, 9-11 on the clock. Everywhere I looked, it was 9-11. So as I began to pray into it, so when you get a snapshot of where God is doing, we're talking about new information that preps you for the next thing. So if you've been stuck, here is how you activate movement and get unstuck. If you've been waiting for breakthrough, here is one of the first things you can do to activate breakthrough and move forward. The first thing you're going to do is listen, get, to, get with God and say, okay, survey your new information. Survey the information that the Lord has been giving you, that the Lord has been revealing to you, that the Lord has been saying to you. Now, it will come from a source that you probably are unfamiliar with. So number one, survey, what is my new information? In my case, I had never studied 9-11 and the number 11, 11-11 and 9-11. I'd never surveyed them. As I began to study these numbers, I began to understand that the number, of, the number nine con communicates the message of finality and completion, and the number 11 it communicates the message of, final, of, of judgment and declaration. Now there are some things in my life right now that the Lord in 2009, the Lord started this process. He got it to a certain point in 2011, but it wasn't finished. So from 2009 to 2011, the Lord brought me to a certain level. But then the Lord had spoken to me and told me that there were some things that were not going to transpire just yet. And so from 2011 till present day, I have been managing some of those issues, some of those challenges. And when I began to see the 9-11 the, the and the 11, what the Lord was saying, I am bringing you full circle and I'm bringing you back to that place to get understanding. In other words, what he was saying to Stella, he's saying, Stella, forget about what you're seeing in terms of the circumstances and the conditions. The Lord was saying, I want you to understand that in this getting, I want you to understand that this thing this mountain, this issue will not come back to you again. Once you cross this mountain this time, you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to come back. It's not going to reappear. The Lord has says, I am bringing final judgment and closure and finality to this thing. And when I do it, it's done. So that was what I had to get understanding about regarding 9-11. Now you say, what's about the feather, Stella? The other thing that the Lord had begun to show me, he was beginning to tell me, Stella, I have increased angelic assignments around you. You must begin to release the angels of the Most High God into the circumstances, not only for your life, but he says, I am increasing your angelic accompaniment so that you can make a difference on other people's lives. Now, here's another thing that he did. While I was at Women on the Front Line, I was in worship, I, we were in a session, and one of the ladies at a table behind me wrote me a little message she wrote she wrote me a little prophetic word and when I fat I was studying getting prepared for this lesson I opened one of my own books the books that we're studying from tonight she lives by the river and I found that note where she said and guess what it said the Lord is increasing angelic assignments around you to fulfill and to bring to finality the thing that you have been contending with. It is over, baby. It's a done deal. Trust God. Believe God. And release the angelic support necessary to handle it. So I begin to decree. And that's what this feather represents. I'll tell you a little bit more about this feather and where it came from. Because I know y'all going to want one. So stop. You can't have this one. It's mine. So God gave me this, he gave me, he, and then he sent a friend who was stepping out into something totally new. And I began to prophesy to her. I said, you know what? That's a key. Now, I had never seen anything she had ever done. I said, well, what's your passion? What's alive in you? What brings you joy? She said, well, you know, I really just like making pottery. 
I said, well, have you made anything? Have you seen anything? Have you done anything? What, what is, what is it? What, what have you seen? What have you made? What, what? And so out of the blue, I get a snapshot of some things that she had made. And guess what one of them was? A feather. And as soon as I saw the feather, that God said, this is another key in your getting understanding. He says, you need to get one of those feathers and begin to wear it as a memorial to the fact that the Lord, according to Psalms 103, the word of God says that the angels hearken unto the voice of the Lord's command. How does the word of God get commandment? How does the word of God get authority? How does the word of God get decreed into a circumstance? It is your voice. It is your decreeing it. It is your speaking it. And it all begins by understanding what voices, what tributaries are flowing into your life. Now, here's the thing. So the first thing God is going to do when he gets ready to shift you into that new thing, if you want to understand how to activate movement and stop staying stagnant and start moving forward and start making progress, the first thing God is going to do is he's going to challenge your information that you've been receiving. So what information have you been receiving? The what you've been hearing up until now has brought you to where you are. And now God is saying where you are, the people who you know, your current friends, your buddies, your homies, your girlfriends, the one you are always going to conferences with. And you get to conferences and you and your girlfriends, all 12 of y'all sitting on the same row. Here's the thing. That relationship circle brought you to the conference. But for you to get from the conference to the next thing, baby, you got to move out of that circle. So the next time you go to the conference, stop putting 15 items on 15 chairs, holding it for the same 15 people who got to you, got you to your current 15 minutes. The Lord is saying, I have more for you. But for you to get to it, you got to break out of that circle. And you're going to have to step into a realm of people who you are unfamiliar with. Which will take you from the new voice, from the new information. The next thing he's going to do is bring into your life new voices. So now the first thing I want you to assess, I've already told you, pay attention to the information that is different. It is challenging. If you've been going to little hometown Baptist church, hearing the same, the Lord going to bring you out sermon for the last 12 years. And you are stuck in a 12 year cycle and a 12 year season. What God is saying to you, baby, is you're going to have to step out of that current circle you're gonna have now I'm not telling you to leave your church but what I am telling you is that you're gonna have to get some new information because the new information is gonna let you know it's gonna be the clue to the next thing that God is gonna do which God is gonna do he's going to bring you into a new new voices so new information will be brought, will bring in new voices. Now these are, I make for many of you, I'm a new voice. For many of you, what you're hearing tonight, you've never heard information like this before. You've never heard information like this. You never thought, well, nobody ever told me about angels and feathers and how to, how, I, how those things are clues. And 9-11 is a clue to me getting understanding. And that understanding in a circumstance or a revelation is something I have to pursue. I have to go get it. And if you don't go get it, if you don't go explore what 9-11 means, there is something God has for you that you won't get. And if you don't get understanding, what you won't recognize is when God takes you to the place of manifestation because you lack understanding, you will miss your opportunity. You may miss your door. You may miss your window. You may miss your season. And contrary to popular opinion, people will tell you, oh, honey, opportunity, it'll come, it'll come around again. No, it won't. Something else may come around, but that particular door, it's not, coming, it's not coming again. Why? Because time, unlike eternity, time has certain things that must happen at that moment. If you don't maximize it, if you don't get the understanding you need, you will miss it. Now, let's bring it home to where the rubber meets the road. Let's give an example. Let's just say if you have been desiring a house or a home and the Lord tells you to get understanding about home ownership, what does it take for you to own a home? How much finances do you need? How much, how, how much capital down payment do you have to have? What credit score do you need? Those are the practical things that the Lord tells you. And then so he'll send somebody across your path who says, girl, I just got an unbelievable deal on a new house. We just got our first home. And that's a clue because now something already in your heart has been triggered because you want you have 
have that desire. Now, we talked last week about the desires being of the father. D, D means coming out of and sire means father. So you've got desires and longings that you've been harboring in your heart and you've been thinking, Lord, my hope is deferred. It's never going to happen to me. It's never going to happen. The reason it's not happening is because you won't go get understanding so that the Lord can get you to the next thing. The understanding that you must pursue, the understanding that you must tap into is insight about how God wants to move on your circumstance. But you have to go get it. You have to go to the class. You have to pursue a class about home ownership. You have to pursue a class about creative financing for your business. You have to pursue wisdom about how to get healing for your body. You have to pursue it. It's not going to come fall in your lap. So the first thing we said tonight is that if you want to activate breakthrough, if you don't want to just sit around and wait for breakthrough to come, if you want to maximize and use your power to create breakthrough, then what you're going to have to do is go get understanding. Get understanding about whatever it is you need breakthrough in. If you need breakthrough about breaking over the demonic, if you're experiencing demonic things in your house and the enemy is showing up and he's bringing fear, there are, there's insight. There are people who deal with that stuff every day, but you must pursue it. And if the people who are in your circle can't tell you anything about that, that is a clue that you must step out of your current circle and tap into the next thing that God has for you. He's got a new circle of relationships. So the first thing is God will introduce into you new information. The next thing God will do is he will bring to you new voices. These voices will be people you don't even know. These are people you've never connected with. These are people who are like, who are, I don't know these people, but what they are saying agrees with the information God has already introduced. Okay, so new information, bringing new voices. Now here's now we're getting ready to talk about the third thing because this is significant. Now you heard me mention all of we, women are so we are so click prone. We are click prone because we want to stay in our circle. We want to stay in our group. We want to stay in our self same a culture of people. So if all you so let me give you some things that you need to do that can impact you. If all your friends, if you're a Caucasian white female and all of your friends are Caucasian white females, you need to bust out of that. You need to branch out because there are things in other cultures that can activate movement in your life that you couldn't otherwise have access to. Every culture, every race has a specific vibration in the earth. It has specific giftings. In other words, I mean, if you want to look at you, you want to if you want to look at a culture that has an authority to release things that are technological, that are finite and extraordinarily detailed, look at look at a person from the Japanese culture. They have the capacity. It's an anointing that's on that culture to examine things at the most incredible level of detail. It's an anointing. If you want to look at something, if you want to see something where, where the worship has a power and a force behind it, that just the virtue of being in the room will shake the very foundation of hell that's trying to build itself up around you, go into a black church where they know how to worship. There is a level of authority. Why? Because of what people of color have been through in this nation, there is an anointing upon them to overcome and to bring out of them something the Lord can use from that culture. To, to shake something in you. If all of your friends, if you're African American and you're uncomfortable around people who are Caucasian or people who are Hispanic or whatever, I'm just giving that as one example. Now that you can use that same paradigm using that principle of breaking out. We're talking about how to activate breakthrough. So the first thing you're going to do is step out of your circle. So I want to challenge everybody in here. I want you to prayerfully seek out relationships with people who are not like you. Ask the Holy Spirit, Lord, there are things in that other. And some of you, the Lord has already been speaking to you about a coworker who sits across the way from you that you don't understand. And the Lord is saying, if you will begin to pursue that relationship and seek to understand, and this isn't, re and by the way, you don't have to be a Christian for those people who are unbelievers, who are not Christians. This works. Stephen Covey taught it. He said, seek first to understand. In other words, when you have an issue with a person, he said, pursue understanding with that individual. You, and what the word of God says, in all thy getting, do what? Get understanding. So you want to get understanding. So we already said the first thing God is going to do 
when he's getting ready to take you into a new season, he's going to change the tributaries of your information source. That means the information that's coming to your life is going to come from a source that you probably haven't been hearing before. Okay? That's the first thing. And then once you begin to get that information in, it's going to strike a chord in your inner man. Let me check my time. Boy, that time went by fast. It's going to strike a chord in your inner man. And there's going to be a sense of agreement. And you're going to hear that thing inside of you saying, yes, yes, I, I need this. Or yes, yes, I, I want that. Or yes, God, yes, I believe I can start this new ministry. I believe I can launch into this thing, this new thing, this new deep thing that God has for me. I can do it. But there's nobody in your circle right now. Who reinforces that so when God sends in that new information that new revelation when you encounter him he brings that new revelation the next thing he's going to do is bring new voices into your life who are gonna reinforce that revelation now here's the beauty of new voices and new information it's going to challenge you to get understanding it's going to challenge you to go pursuing levels of wisdom and insight that you have not known before. So, new, inf new information, then new voices, and then the next thing he's going to do is help you form new strategic alliances. Now, let's talk about the new strategic alliances. Now, when, and let's use an example from scriptures. I love the example of Esther because Esther was chosen and ordained by God to be a queen. That was her destiny. That was her calling. That was her assignment. But when she was in the infancy of her calling, and remember, when God calls you into something, she didn't just step into the court and become queen. If she didn't. It took time. So the acorn seed, the acorn of her oak tree vision started very small with her uncle Mordecai nurturing in her life the seeds of her destiny. Now, here's another example. Joseph. People talk about Joseph. You know, Joseph becoming the second in command to Egypt. It didn't just happen. Joseph got a revelation through a dream of what his destiny held. He got the acorn seed of his destiny in a vision form where God gave him a dream. And then when he took that dream, God began to cultivate that acorn seed of a vision so that he planted it. And then over the course of what history dictates is what was around 13 years, Joseph stepped into it. But over that 13 years, what happened to Joseph? Joseph was taken completely out of his environment. Esther was taken completely out of her environment. Those are two Old Testaments. Now, for those people who are not preachy, preachy, churchy, churchy people, let me give you a natural day example. Remember the black gymnast, G uh, Gabby, remember when I believe she was in Virginia, she lived in Virginia, but she wanted to be an Olympic champion and she believed that being an Olympic champion was in her destiny. As she believed that being an Olympic champion was in her destiny, she had to step completely out of her environment. So her mother and her father and her family packed up their baby and sent her all the way out somewhere, I believe, in the Midwest, where there was nothing out there but people of Caucasian, mostly white people. She packed up and went to a culture that was totally living with the family out of a culture that she had never experienced before. But those were the people who were the new, they were the new strategic alliances who had the capacity to cross a beshakunta in Jesus name, who had the capacity to introduce her to her destiny. For those people who, I'm sorry, I don't mean to step into tongues. I apologize. Sometimes when information is coming into my spirit faster than my mouth can process it, I may stumble into tongues and I don't mean to do that but I ain't apologizing for it either it's just a way that the Lord has used to help me refine the information that he is giving me and to help me manage the speed at which it comes so that I can give it to you in a way that you can get understand 
So get so that so I believe I can't remember. I hope her, I hope I get her name right. If I don't, you guys please forgive me. She was the last Olympic champion, Olympic gymnast. She moved to a completely different culture so that she could step into her destiny and manifest what God had for her. So what are the three things? The first thing is new information. The second thing is new voices. And the third thing is new strategic alliances. Now, here's the thing that differentiates the new strategic alliances from the old ones. The old alliances you have had in your life have had the capacity to get you where you are. They do not have the capacity to get you where you are going. So if you've been going to the same church, listening to the same pastor, hearing the same sermons, going to the same women's Bible study, hearing that you've been going to, you know, I grew up in the Church of God in Christ, so I can say that if you've been going to YPWW and they're doing the same recycled Bible studies at YPWW that they've been doing for the last 12 years, you're going to have to step out of that because the battles that we are encountering in this era, if you're going to be a woman, a Kyle woman who has the capacity to access the warrior anointing, who has the capacity to access the wealth anointing, and who has the capacity to access the wisdom anointing, you're going to have to be moving in a circle with people, baby, who are already there. And the people who got you to where you are can't take you to the next level. So you got to step out. You can't become an Olympic champion training with the same people you've been training with for the last 12 years. I couldn't. Joseph couldn't. Esther couldn't. You can't. You must change your circle. So if you want to access the things, the understanding that will escort you into what you have been longing for, if you want to activate breakthrough, if you want to activate movement, if you want to activate the anointing so that you can possess what God has promised, so you can no longer have your hopes deferred, baby, it's real easy. Do one of these three or all of them if you really want to see quick movement. Number one, get access to new information about what you are dealing with. Number one, go get it. In all thy getting, get understanding. Go get understanding in that new area right away. Number two, Listen for new voices. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises. If he has made a promise to you, hath he said, shall he not do it? Hath he spoke it, shall he not make it good? God is faithful. We are the ones who have to go get understanding about the revelation you have been given. So if the revelation, the snapshot, the image that God has given you is of a ministry where you're going to be traveling the world, you need a passport. You need a passport. So go get the passport. What is the information you need to get the passport? Because if you never get the passport, you are not leaving these United States of America. You got to have a passport. Okay? Just say it. So go get it. Go in pursuit of the thing that God has established for you. Now, for those, again, this is not just for believers. This is not just for churchy people. This is for people who just want to activate change in their life. If you are used to people being around you, who are pe if you're tired of being around people who are fighting and cussing and fussing and who have all of these issues, if you're tired of dealing with stupid issues, then you got to stop hanging around stupid people. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk to you is about the law of association. The law of association says you will become like the people you spend your time with. If you are consistently finding yourself caught up in fights and broils and arguments and deceptions and you're talking about haters and I, I don't even have time. I could care less about my uh, haters. I don't have any. Why? Because if they hate, they can't hate me without hating God. Why? Because you can't love God and hate me. It's not possible. So I just decree that everybody I come in contact with in Jesus' name will become a child of the Most High God. That no person who comes under the sound of my voice will go into utter darkness. I claim every soul that hears this voice for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The fact that you even hear me, I've already decreed, baby, you're going to get saved. Whether you know 
what time you going to go in pursuit of understanding of your own salvation or not. I have already gone before you, prepared the way with declarations, intercession, and prayer over you. So you may think you hate on me, but all you are doing is establishing the debts to which you will pursue movement in your life. So the more you hate me, the greater the love of God is going to manifest in your life. So you can't hate me. You can only love God. I just choose to see it as you're going to be a lover of God. Why? Because the word of God says to love your neighbor as yourself. And since you're my neighbor, I love you. And you're going to love me. Why? Because I've already said you're going to be a child of the Most High King because I've been praying for you. And you don't even know who I am. Now, that's my own paradigm. That's my own level of pursuit of striving to be in the manifest presence of God so that I can take, I can take authority over the releases that are happening in my life. So if you want to activate movement, if you are tired of your status quo, if you are weary of things being the same old, same old, if you are tired of sitting at home going, I wish God would cause my hope. I'm, I don't want to hope anymore because, you know, you start hoping for stuff. It don't happen. You get disappointed. You get disappointed and you all sad. Get over it. Shake yourself. Slap your own self. Okay. Slap yourself. Do it. Why? Because you have the power to activate breakthrough any time you want. And you do it with these three techniques. Number one, go get new information. Number two, go get new voices. Find new teachers. Find new Bible studies. Find new curriculum. Find, and you know, call, get mine. Golly, this is good stuff. This is good stuff, okay? You'll have to change the tributaries. The tributaries are where you drink from. If the people pouring into your life are activating fear, you need to cut off that flow and you need to turn around and find people to pour into your life who can activate faith and confidence and belief in you so that you can rise up to be who God has called you to be, and you can be empowered to do what God has called you to do. You are a seed of destiny. When God thought about you before you ever landed in your mother's womb, before your mama even knew your daddy, he thought of you and he had an image of who you were supposed to be. Now you get to partner with that vision. By getting with God and saying, Lord, I know there's more. Where are the, where's the new information I need to use to access it? Who are the new voices I need to listen to, to bring faith so that I can agree with what you've already decreed over me? And last but not least, who are my new strategic alliances? You know, I have people all the time asking me, Stella, do you coach? You know, I do on a very limited basis because I'm not your typical coach. I'm not going to hold your hand and tell you to go get your goals and what now. You're going to do this, do this, do this. I, there are people who do that well, and I'm not minimizing that. But what I will challenge you to do is to cultivate a level of spiritual awareness where you can do like I did. You can go get insight and wisdom into some Something as simple as a number series of numbers where God can speak to you through that series of numbers where a whole level of new information new voices new strategic alliances now here is your homework assignment now we're talking about strategic alliances about drinking sources in order for you to get to the next thing to move from where you are you're going to have to have new information new voices and new strategic alliances so today's exercise is about strategic questions about evaluating your drinking sources who are you drinking from the people you've been drinking from have got you to where you are so i want to challenge you to get your home get your workbooks out get your she lived by the river workbooks and you're going to evaluate your drinking sources you're going to look and to Take a, pay attention to are there people in your life who are activating fear fear and faith cannot occupy the same space you got it one has got to go fear cannot remain where faith exists and faith cannot grow where fear exists so you have to toss one or the other out okay choose faith 
By faith, the worlds were framed by the word of God. God is endeavoring to help you frame the world he saw when he thought of you before you ever landed in your mother's womb. But you'll have to go get understanding about what that looks like. Okay? So if you don't have a workbook now, if you want to get one of these, you can still, we still have six weeks left. This is week number two. There are six weeks left in this class. If you will, oh, I love it. I love it. I see somebody says, I choose faith and uh, thank you God. Oh, I'm so glad you guys are logging on. So if you don't have this, you can order it. Go to my website. You can order the workbook and a Kayo bracelet. We'll send you a Kayo bracelet and a workbook. It's $25, but you don't have to do that to get the class. You can just take your pencil and write down notes. If you just take the notes from what I teach on this video and do that, it will revolutionize your life. But there are things that are in this workbook that are designed to activate thinking and to activate action. I don't want you to just, oh, that was a good lesson. That was good teaching. No, I don't, don't even look if that's all you're going to do. What I want you to do is to take action. I want you to become a rare expression of God in the earth. A woman who gets revelation through encounter. So you've got revelation. You encounter God. It activates revelation, which inspires you to be moved upon by the Holy Spirit to take action. Once you take that action, it will create results. And the results is what God is after. Because when you get results, baby, the whole world stops and takes notice. That's why the poor man's wisdom was despised. He had a lot of good information. That's from the book of Ecclesiastes. He had a lot of good information, but he had no results because his circumstance was poverty. So if you want to create influence for the kingdom of God, you must manifest results. Wow. Wow, there are so many of you who stayed on this whole broadcast. I want to say to all 50 some of y'all, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Now, let's get ready. Oh, I got about 30 seconds left. Next week, what is next week's lesson? Next week is lesson number three. Lesson number three is going to be powerful. This is about accessing your authority to reign by the river. R-E-I-G-H-N. Reigning, taking authority, maximizing your capacity. Because when you start to listen to new voices, when you start to, to get that new information, when you start to form strategic alliances, do not think that the enemy is not going to come at you to try to stop your efforts. You're going to have to tap into a level of courage and valor and warfare that you've never seen before. But that's okay. Because the Lord has already said he has given his angels charge over you. Now, last thing, if you guys are, if you love my feather, my, I call it my angelic feather. It's a ceramic tile made just for me. I'm so excited. It is representative of the angelic presence that is assigned to my life and yours. If you love my feather and you want information on how to get one, let me know. I'll be glad to turn you on. And no, you cannot have one like mine. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Love you all. Thank you, Precious. Thank you, CR. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Mary. Thank you, Ted. Thanks, Angela. Oh my gosh. Thank you guys so much. Until next week, when we take up lesson number three, Raining by the River, you make it a terrific day.